Hello students, welcome to Shore Upsets classes. So in today's video, we'll solve UGC NET 2014 June paper 3. So in today's video, we'll solve the international economics paper. Sorry, in today's video, we'll solve the public finance portion of this paper. So we'll start with question number 28. So we'll start with question number 28. So in question number 28, it is given the concentration effect. So in question number 28, it is given the concentration effect. Effect explained by Peacock Williamson. Hypothesis implies that four options are given. Public expenditure does not increase in smooth and continuous manner. <clears throat> Public expenditure increases the necessity of increased revenue. The central government's economic activity to grow faster than that of subnational governments. An absolute level of public expenditure increases. So, out of these four, we know the right answer would be option C. That is the central government economics activity to grow faster than that of subnational government. So, central government economic activity to grow subnational government. So, concentration effect, concentrations effect explained by concentration effect. explained by Peacock Weissman. So Peacock Weissman gave the concentration effect which says central government's economic activity to grow faster than that of subnational sub government. Now we'll come to question number 29. Tax imposed on monopoly profits can be shifted forward, backward can be shifted both forward and backward and cannot be shifted. So for question number 29, we know a tax imposed of monopoly profits cannot be shifted. So a tax imposed on monopoly profit cannot be shifted because a monopolist by definition fixes the output and supply price of his product so as to get the maximum possible profit which in turn are given by a position where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Now. If a tax is imposed upon monopoly profit, the monopolist cannot choose a better position of supply and price so as to increase his profit out of which to pay the tax. Actually, he is supposed to have chosen the maximum profit position even if no tax on monopoly profit is imposed. So, this conclusion remains valid whether the tax on monopoly profit is lump sum or proportionate tax. So, we can all say that imposition of such a tax does not shift the demand or supply curve so, the sale price of the commodity does not change. So, for question number this, that is a tax tax imposed on monopoly profit cannot be shifted. So, a tax import on monopoly profit cannot be shifted. So, for question number 29, the right answer is option D. Now, we'll go to question number 30. So, in question number 30, it is given the Plan expenditure on revenue account of the union government includes four options are given economic services, social and community services, grants in aid to state and union territories, loans and advantages to loan and advances to finance public enterprises. So the plan expenditure of revenue account. So the plan expenditure on revenue account of the union government of the union government includes So economic service, obviously it includes economic service. It also includes social and community services and also the grants in states and unions. So loans and advances to finance public enterprise is not included. So for question number 30, the right answer is option B that is economic services social and community services grant in aid states and union territories so for question number 30 the right answer is option b now we'll come to question number 31 so in question number 31 it is given debt obligations of government of india that is government liabilities four options are given debt obligations of government of india is given by four options we know that for question number 31, 
the right answer would be option B. That is set state provident fund, small savings and reserve fund and deposit. So it is state provident fund, small savings and reserve fund and deposit. So debt obligation of government of India includes state provided funds, small savings, reserve funds and deposit. So for question number 31, the right answer is option B. Now we'll we have come to question number 32. So identify the chronology of the following committees on tax reforms in India. So four committees are given. So we have to arrange them in chronologically. So for this first, we know it was Calder proposal for tax reform in India. So two comes first, that is Calder proposal for tax reform in India. Then it came direct tax administration inquiry committee. So it then it came four after two came four. Then after that it came Committee on Taxation of Agricultural Income and Wealth. Committee on Taxation of Agricultural Income and Wealth. So one and finally it came to be Task Forces on Direct and Indirect Tasks. So three. So for this we can say for question number 32 the right answer would be option B. So for question number 32 the right answer would be option B. So identify this. So chronologically what would be the case? That is first will come Kelder proposal for tax reforms in India, then direct tax administration inquiry committee and then committee on taxation of agricultural income and wealth and then finally it came task forces on direct and indirect tax. So then we will say it will be option B. The right answer would be option B. Now we have come to the last question of this part. So it is question number 33. So in question number 33 it is given which of the following are role of finance commissioner India. So four options are given as you can see to make recommendation on distribution of tax proceed between center and state. So make recommendation. So this is right. So make recommendation on distribution of tax proceed between, between center and state. So this is the work of finance commission then to make to make recommendation on levying, removing or reconstructing taxes. So it is not the um, role of finance commission to recommend grants in aid under article 275 of constitution. This is also right. And to recommend plan and other grants under article 282 constitution. This is not right. So we would conclude. One is right and three is right. So by this logic we can say for question number 33 the right answer is option B. So for question number 33, the right option is option B. So for 33, the right answer is option B. So in today's video, we solved a couple of questions. We started from question number 28. From 28, we solve until 33. So in the subsequent video, we'll solve other questions from the same paper. So keep watching if you have any query or doubt. You can simply WhatsApp me on this number which is 9836793076 or you can also go to our website which is www.showdopsearchclasses.com There you will find a lot of other videos like this and you will also get to see a lot of other materials which are needed for different entrance exam on economics. So thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day ahead.